Hi everyone, today we're doing Calico. Calico is a fantastic game about making a quilt for your cats to sit on. Not just sit on it, but I guess lay luxuriously across it. Calico is a game by Kevin Russ, illustrated by Beth Sobel, and published by AEG with Flat Out Games. The aim is to make the most beautiful quilt, um, which is judged in a number of ways over the game, and it, it varies game to game, so it's quite a replayable game. This is what a player board looks like, and on this board you're going to be putting these hexagonal quilt patches, which can have six different patterns and six different colors, and while you're doing it, you're going to be trying to obey some design goals, of which you'll have three. This is randomly selected from a set of six tiles, though you have a little bit of agency in their placement and choice. Here is a bag of a whole bunch of the different cats you can get in the game, and all of these cats have their own personalities and styles. In the rule book, you'll find a little description of each of the cats and a bit about them, which I think is just so cute. Well, that's the overview of the game. Let's get into a bit more detail now. As part of the setup, we're gonna set up a board for each player. This game supports two to four players, which is very nice. You're gonna get your boards. You're gonna get out these colorful button tiles, which I'll explain when we get to the gameplay. Once you have those out, you get to choose your cats for the game. So the cats have difficulty levels at the bottom in dots and we're gonna choose one of the one set, one of the two set, and one of the three set difficulties. Normally, I'll just sort of mix these about and have someone else choose from my hands and then give them a flip because they're double-sided. You'll end up with three cats. Then we're gonna take our six black and white pattern tiles that I'm dropping all over myself. They look like this and randomly assign them to the cats that we've chosen and then just find a bunch of cat tokens that match the cats you have in front of you. This part can be a bit finicky. Maybe you want to get more bags than we have. Uh, we just have one big bag for them. Your choice. And then finally, we're going to do our design goal setup. For your color, you're gonna grab a set of six design goals with your color back. You're gonna give them a little shuffle. You're gonna grab four of them. And already a bit of strategy is coming into the game because you need to choose three design goals that you think will work for you. And I'll explain them all in a moment. Then we're gonna set up the market. So we're gonna hand out two patches to each player, put three patches into the middle of the table. And now we're ready to get going. Now that we've done the setup, I'm gonna explain a bit more about how the different elements of this game work together. First off, there are the patches. On your turn, what you're going to do is you're gonna take one of the two patches that you have in your hand, and uh, you can keep it private or keep it public. Your choice depends on how competitive you want to be, but you're gonna take one of them and you're just gonna go put it somewhere on your board. Now, in placing it, you might get some buttons or some cats placed when you do it. How do these work? Buttons are the simplest. When you place three of a color that connect in some way onto your board, you will gain a button of that color and you'll go put it onto your board. When you're placing these, make sure to also think about the edges of your board because they also contribute colors and patterns to your designs. So even placing one yellow onto the edge of the board could mean you already have a set of two pieces that are connected which means you're only one away from getting your first button. One cool thing is that there's also a rainbow button. If you manage to get one of each button type in the game, you get a free rainbow button, which is worth an extra three points at the end of the game. Then there are cats. Now the cats each have different requirements explained on them. Sometimes they use this format where they just have a hexagon and a number with a plus, that means you just need to connect three or more tiles. Sometimes they have a specific shape though, so when you connect the tiles, they have to follow that shape. And when you're trying to get a cat, you need to choose one of the two patterns below them and put tiles matching their requirement onto your board. So they're kind of like the buttons, but 
therefore patterns instead of colors, sometimes they have a specific shape. When you get the cats, you're gonna grab the appropriate cat token and also put that on your board if you manage to achieve it. Finally, we have the design goals. Now these are slightly more complex, but I think they're the real core of the game, so we're gonna spend a bit more time on them. There are six design goals, but they mostly follow the same pattern, and I'll explain that to you. Now, five of the six of them show some number of letters connected with dashes. For example, this one says AAA-BBB. This denotes having different sets of colors and patterns around this design goal tile. So there are six spots around it, and you'll see there are six letters, and that sort of determines the composition you're aiming. What does it mean more particularly? So in this case, you'll want three of one color, and they don't all have to be connected, they can be on different sides randomly around it, as long as they're touching this. So you could have three of one color and three of another color, and you'll have achieved the basic version of this design goal. Alternatively, you could have three of one pattern and three of another pattern, and you could achieve this design goal. If you manage to do both, which is a tad harder, especially when you've got all these other things you're thinking about, you get more points for completing it. So at the top of the design goal, it has two sets of points. The first one in the blue button is just for completing one of those. If you manage to do both, you get the slightly bigger total in the little yellow button. So for this specific one, you'll get seven points if you manage to get one set matching, but you'll get 13 points if you manage to do both the colors and the patterns. Now, how does this expand to the other five of those six design goal types? Well, you'll see, for example, this one says A, A, B, B, C, C. In that case, you'll want sets of two of them, but you also get something like A, 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 B, B, C. So you'll want three of one color, two of another color, and one of a third color, and the same with patterns. And at the same time, these don't all have to be the same. So when you're cross-matching the patterns and colors, they can be on different tiles. You'll understand more when we get to the gameplay. Finally, there's the not equals design goal. And this one basically means that you want all of the pieces around it to have different attributes, so different colors or different patterns, or even harder, both. All of the scoring happens at the end of the game, but you've got to decide your strategy up front with the design goals and sort of work towards what you're going for, whether it's more cat-focused, button-focused, or design goal-focused, or, I mean, you can try to go for all three, especially in your first few games, though, it will be a bit difficult to keep all of that in mind, but you'll get better the more you play. So, here we have a nice setup. We've got everything out and about. We've each had the option to choose our design goals from our four out of the six. We chose three and their places, and we're ready to begin the game. And we each have our starting hands. Now here, you'll see we have three possible cats. Rumi, Kira, and Gwen. Kira and Gwen, luckily, are not specified, which might make them slightly easier to achieve. Rumi should also be fairly easy, because it's only three tiles. All of these different factors are gonna come into how we play the game. So I already started with two purple tiles. So I'm probably gonna go for an early button, and I'm gonna see if I can combo these in some way to also go for a cat at the same time and meet my design goals. Remember, when you're trying to go for a cat, it must be a pattern set of only one of the two patterns under them. So I could have a pattern set of lines or of these funky leave things for Kira, but not one that's like say four and two or three and three. It needs to be one pattern type. So in this case, if I'm taking a look, maybe I'll think about putting my purple lines over here because they will combo with my lines on the side of the board and let me grow out those lines and hopefully get a Kira. And at the same time, it's next to a purple so I can work towards a purple button. So I'll do just that. I'll think about its effects on my design goal later. I'll place this here. And I'm gonna look over there and see what I might want to get. Now, 
This tile probably makes sense because it can lead into roomies and I don't have anything else specified. So I will take it and I will refill the market. Now here, if I play this tile connecting to these purples, I will have a set of three purples, which means I get one of these buttons that I can put onto here. Why did I put it at the top? Yeah, I'm hopeful. I'm hoping that maybe I can combine the flowers with the flowers to get a Gwen in future, though it does block off this corner one. Let's see what happens. Now I'm gonna grab the lines here because I am hopeful to get a Kira at the very least. I like having cats on my quilts. <laughs> so I'm gonna play this dark blue line piece over here. So now that I've got so now I've got three lines connected to each other. What this does mean, however, is I've now essentially chosen the two possible colors that I'd want to surround this design goal with. It's one of the trade-offs you have to make constantly as you're playing this game. What are you gonna prioritize over what? Sometimes you can't complete something and you have to let it go. You may never get that perfect piece you want. In this case, still fine, but maybe later I would have had an even harder decision to make. In this case, I'm just gonna play this blue piece over here and get one of these blueberry looking pieces as an extra button for some points. Okay, I'm beginning to feel confident that this Gwen is going to be achievable because I've got the two, one in my hand and there's one over there that I'm gonna pick up now. So I'm gonna place this over here and draw this. Why there? Why there? So I was considering playing it here, thinking about putting this potential yellow one over here. But the thought that stimmied me is if I wanted to get, you know, this yellow button, I'd have to put a yellow in one of these two squares, which would mess up the potential to get the color matching around this design goal. So right now, that's not critical to me. I'm probably going less buttons and more cats this round. So I'd rather put this here, just work across. We've already seen a few pinks out, so there are probably more yellows to get onto that one. So here, this piece just came out after my turn and it might make strategic sense for my partner to take this on her turn, if it makes sense in her grid, to slow me down on my pursuit to have a Gwen cuddling up on my quilt. So we'll see what she actually takes based on her board state and if, if she can swing it. So, I managed to get one of the thousands of pluses offered to us. And by placing it here, I'm completing my first line of three in a row of these pluses, which matches up with Rumi, the cat. So I can get a Rumi cat, I just put them on my board, and now at the end of the game, I'll be scoring those five points. In placing this, my wife has completed her surrounding of this design goal. Now, she's not going to score now, but I just want to explain it for the purposes um, of endgame scoring. We can take a look at this goal 
and look at it in both ways, in terms of colors and patterns. And we want three of one, two of another, and one of a third one. So if we look in terms of colors, there are three reds, two purples, and one blue. So she got it. If we look in terms of patterns, we'll see there are three of these viney leaves, two of these uh, lines, and one of these flowers. So she caught it as well. That means instead of getting seven points or no points, she's gonna get the full 11 points for completing this. And you'll notice that these didn't necessarily have to be matching between the two sets. So just because those are purple lines doesn't mean she needed two purple lines. It just needs to be in those tiles. So counted separately, which makes it slightly easier and a bit more tactical. Let's carry on. Here, I'm going to play these purple dots next to this goal here. Unfortunately, that means I can't possibly get the pattern version of this because I've already played three unique pattern types around it and we could only have two. The best I could hope for is to get two dark blue pieces should the bag decide I'm worthy to fill into here. It also means by placing this, and I've thought this through, that I've only got one square missing here, which needs very particular tile. It needs these light blue in dots if I want to get both of them. But at any point now, I can sacrifice, I can just put in dots, or I can just put in a light blue tile, and I'll still achieve one level of the goal. And it's only a four point difference. Rather get those seven points than nothing. Now, let's talk about game and scoring. It's everything we've already covered, but now we're just gonna put it on this sheet. So, one for M for my wife, J for me, and we're just gonna look at the three factors, the design goals, the cats, and the buttons we've acquired along the way. So, design goal-wise, let's take a look at the sacrifices we made and whether we managed to achieve them. So if we take a look at this not equals, and I'll just move this slightly. You'll see there is a double color. However, they are all different patterns. So that means that's 10 points for the first design goal. If we take a look at this one, it is an easier design goal in general, so you can only get up to seven points for it. But let's see, there are two blues, two reds, a light blue and a yellow, so it's got it for the colors. There are two flowers, two lines, one of each of two random patterns. So she managed to do both patterns and colors. So that's the full seven points. And we already discussed that one earlier. So that's another 11 points. Then we'll take a look at the cats. And along the way, she managed to gather a Rumi and a Kira for a total of five plus nine is 14 points. And then we can count up the buttons. She got one, two, three, four, five buttons is 15 points because it's three points per button. And yes, you may hear our cats meowing in the background. It's almost dinner time. They will be fed soon and then they can relax. Now we'll take a look at my points. So my design goals were kind of abysmal this game. I did have a harder set of three and no not equals. And that's normally a very strong one to have because it helps you get rid of some tiles. But let's take a look. For this design goal, I managed to get three, two and one of the different colors. But unfortunately, I didn't manage to get the patterns to work. So that's just seven points. 
Same deal here, I managed to get two yellows, two purples, but not the same colors, but I did manage to get matching patterns for another seven points. And finally, this design goal I totally flubbed, didn't manage to get it in any way whatsoever, so that's zero for that. But in terms of cats, I managed to get the trifecta. I got a Rumi, a Kira, and a Gwen for a total of 25 points. And then finally, we can count up the buttons. I got one, two, three, four, five buttons. It's 15 points. And the winner in this case is my wife with three more points than me. Uh, I'll just do the totals quickly for the sake of it. In this case, 54 versus 57 points. And that's how you play this game. Now I will hand over the Master Quilter patch because it is no longer for me. And that is Calico.